Yes, I think uh, most of you guys has already seen the huge blue the exhibition board downstairs because we are from Open Eulers. So let me first introduce the Open Eulers. Oh uh, yes, it's maybe you have seen these pictures before. So I just repeat the words for you guys. Open Euler is an open source free Linux distribution platform. The platform provides an open communities for the global developers to build an open, diversified, and architecture inclusive software ecosystem. And Open Euler is also innovative platforms that encourages everyone to propose new ideas, explore new approaches, and practice new solutions. So our community started from 2019. So that's all. And uh, so we will talk about the infrastructures. And uh, you can you can take a look at the pictures. And uh, when we talk about the operating systems, uh, many people will come to the mind of the CentOS or FedOS. So we try to build the infrastructures for our own version of operating systems. We find that there are many so so many excellent and mutual projects that can be used to set up the whole infrastructure for our communities. So take a look at this one. Um, we, we use the OBS, OBS, the Open Build Service from the OpenSUSE projects to build our packages and to distribute our packages. We also use the GNU Mailman. Maybe you have heard of that before as our many list systems. Um, you may also find that there are a bunch of the projects comes from the CNCF. Yes, we have the NGX Ingress, which is used as our reverse proxy server and the simple API gateways. We also use the uh, Argo CDs. Yes, Argo CDs are nice tools. We use Argo CDs to centralize our applications, the changes, the codes to into our production environment. We also use the uh, Vault from the HashiCorp, which is used as our sensitive data backend. And we will use another small tool to centralize all the sensitive data from our Vault backend to our Kubernetes clusters via uh, ENVs or configuration files. And uh, we also use the copper. Copper is come from the Fedora. Fedora use copper to for the individual package services. And we have enhanced the, the copper in several ways to make it running better in the Kubernetes clusters. Okay, there are a lot of, lot of the projects. Uh, yes, we also have the pro from the CNCF to review the uh, PRs. And for the next part, we will uh, give you the overview of our infrastructures. Actually, there are two tiers in our infrastructures. And for the tier one, we use telephone files to centralize and to create all of the base ICE resource, including the VPCs, the VMs, and the uh, CCE clusters. And for the second tier, it's all about the Kubernetes clusters. Uh, actually, we have two different kind of clusters in our environment. Uh, the first one is the master cluster. We use the master cluster for the DevOps, pro pro uh, DevOps process of our all the applications. As you may find, there are some several key applications. They are Argo CDs, Vault backend, and uh, uh, Elastic, sta uh, Elastic Stack, and the Grafana. So. Actually, all of the, our applications are maintained by the Argo CD. So once we have created a new version of our applications images, we will use the Argo CDs to centralize uh, changes into our different clusters. And uh, we have about 155 applications uh, running back the way 300 VMs. So, and the currently we have 10,000 developers in Open Euler. So it's a huge infrastructure. And all of the applications will be deployed into our uh, business clusters there directly. So uh, we will uh, go into the next part. It's about the cloud native DevOps. So uh, uh, we will share some experiments and uh, some best practice for you about how we deploy the applications in a cloud native way. Uh, there are four parts. The first part is about uh, deployment uh, standardizations. So yes, of course, if you want to deploy applications into Kubernetes clusters, you have to containerize the applications. So uh, there are several rules. The first one is about containerized applications. 
uh, one process per container. So uh, we need to upgrade the existing projects to make it uh, uh, running in your Kubernetes clusters. And the second one is about to Kubernetes deployment semantics. So we suggest our developers to use Helm chart and customize to upgrade the deploy YAML files. And the mm, next several rules is including the standard log output and the configuration, the sensitive data where ENVs, because we, we will use the bot packet and centralize the, all of the data uh, by our small tool, which is called uh, Secret Manager. And uh, we also uh, ask our developers to restrict, uh, uh, to push the images to the restricted image repo. Actually, we, 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 we don't use the Git, uh, Docker Hub because we, we have some um, tools. Our private uh, repos, which is used to scan the uh, CVEs and uh, to perform some um, checks before deploying. Um, we also use, we also ask our uh, infra developers to use trusted based images. For example, uh, they are asked to use the uh, open URL based images because so one of the packages is, uh, uh, can be uh, easily upgraded if some CVE issues has been fixed. Uh, and the last one is about the ex to expose the health check endpoint. Yes, we need to restart the, the applications by uh, detecting the health check endpoints. So this is the first part. And uh, for the second part, it's about uh, the configuration separations. So uh, there are four, uh, three, three different rules in the whole process to, de to deploy the applications to our production environment. The first rule is the application developers, who is responsible to write out the raw Kubernetes YAML files, which will not contain any details for the deployment. For example, the storage class names and the domain names. And uh, for the second row is our DevOps engineer, which is used to add more details to the YAML files with uh, customize or Helm chart. And uh, he will add the storage class name as well as with the configurations from the, our um, production environment. For example, the, the real database connection URL, the password and the username. And uh, for the third part is our info maintainers who is responsible for uh, reviewing all the changes, all the applications in our uh, in, uh, communities. He is responsible uh, to merge the pull request and uh, it will be handed to the Argo CD. Argo CD is used to centralize the changes. So that's for the part two. And uh, for the part three and part four is about uh, GitOps option, uh, GitOps and uh, the automations. Uh, I think GitOps is a great rules and uh, we utilize um, a lot about the opportunities and uh, it can give us several benefits, including increased uh, productivities and the improved uh, stabilities, higher reliabilities and the stock stronger security uh, guarantees. Uh, I think uh, some of you guys, you have already used the GitOps uh, best practice in your environment. And uh, for the last uh, part is about automations. Actually, there are three different uh, cases for the automations. And the first one is about the end-to-end -end pipeline for every services. So let me, uh, you can take a, look, take a look at this picture. This is our website pipeline. It's actually the pipeline for our every uh, stateless, uh, stateless uh, website. So, once, uh, once our uh, developers come from the community to submit a new PR, we will create a temporary port which will reflect all the changes and the actual look of the, our website. And our maintainer is, uh, will review all the changes and uh, to get the PR get merged. Um, after that, everything is auto-triggered by our Jenkins Argo CDs, so it will build it will check and build the new version of our images and we will push to our private uh, doc, uh, uh, image hub repositories. Also, we have the tools uh, and the task to scan our images. After that, uh, the Argo CD will use the uh, new images to centralize the reflection, uh, to centralize the changes to, into our production environment. And we also have the post jobs, which is used to purge all of the website catches, and as well as notify our 
uh, website maintainers. So uh, that's for uh, all of the best practices we have learned during we, during the process when we set up the whole infrastructure for our open URL communities. And uh, we are heading to the next part. Uh, during this part, we will, I will share some uh, excellent applications that we have been working on um, to make them better, running better in the Kubernetes clusters. So um, some of the projects uh, is based on the op existing operating, uh, operating projects, but uh, uh, some of the um, projects is based on the ideas we learned from other open source projects. So there are two cases. Um, the first one is about a bot. So if you guys have ever been the open source communities, you have, you must have learned that uh, there is a bot application used to uh, connect all the different uh, applications into the pro request. For example, if the new developers submit a new PR, the maintainers will use the bot application to check the, the code to perform the CLA checks and as well as to uh, assign, on assign and uh, to post his uh, comments on the pro request. So uh, application actually, the Yarbot, uh, yes, Yarbot is, uh, is short for yet another bot. It's based on the idea of the pro project for the CNCF communities. So when first time we tried to investigate the existing uh, bot applications, we found the pro project from CNCF and it's a nice project. It has uh, about uh, uh, 30 plugins that we be, which can be directly used in our environment, but the, oh, the, the pro project still has some issues and uh, some performance bottleneck, including once the one of the uh, plugins get crashed, the whole pro application will get restarted. As well as it sometimes when there are huge messages comes from the code repository. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, when <laughs> uh, when the huge message comes from the repositories, so it uh, we sometimes lose the event. So we have upgraded the pro uh, project into our Yarbot. So. Uh, I have, we have improved it uh, from several aspects. Uh, first is the robust. So now every single plugin will be separated in the containers and it's easy to replicate. And if one of the plugins get uh, uh, crashed, it will not affect the whole application. And uh, the second uh, improvement is about the high support. We use Kafka to receive the message from the code platforms as well as uh, deliver the messages to the back of the plugins based on the capabilities of the plugins. And uh, we also have the uh, developers on SDKs for the Python, Java, and uh, Goland to, for our developers to uh, develop their own version of the plugins as soon as possible. So within this change, a newcomer or new developers in our Infra6 can have their own version or have the new plugins in half a days. Okay, I will speed up. And the second uh, application is the uh, meeting board. So heavy meeting is a uh, quite the essential requirement for the communities because we have about uh, tens, tens of meetings per, you know, per week. So we have created our own version of the meeting board. Actually, the architecture of the meeting board is quite simple. And the most of the job is done by the Kubernetes uh, job. We have our uh, operators, which will uh, subscribe to the events that comes from the Kitty, the Zoom, the, uh, uh, the winning and the Tencent meetings. We also will watch the meetings from the OPS, operate, uh, um, as well as the WeChat application. So once the event comes, we will use the Kubernetes jobs to create a meeting, to download a video, and to send the email to our SIG owners, as well as publish to publish the videos to our social platforms, including the PDPD and the YouTube. So you can take a look at these pictures. So this is the archive, the website uh, of the PDPD for all of the uh, videos we have. And uh, for the next one is uh, UI in WeChat. And our SIG maintainers use that WeChat to book meetings and to notify the developers. And uh, okay, the next one. Next one is about uh, signing services. Because we, we are a community to 
for the operating systems. So signing packages and signing the uh, binary files is one of the requirements for our um, communities. And the first, we use OBS sign from the open, uh, open build, uh, open SUSE to do the scenes of signing scenes. But uh, we also find that uh, there is a, there are several aspects uh, in the OBS sign. They they can be improved. The first one is about the securities because every private and public keys will be stored directly on the local machines. So it's possible that uh, the PGP keys or the X509 keys got leaked by the bad guys. So, uh, and the second one is about the performance. Um, when we use OBS sign in our production environment, we found that uh, it's possible that it's possible it will take the five or six minutes to sign a single package. So it's quite slow. So uh, based on this idea, so we have created our own version of the sign service, which is named uh, Cinetrust. Cinetrust is a new world, which is a combination of the signature, trust, and Rust. Yes, it's, so called, uh, it's based on the Rust languages. And uh, we have improved the sign service in several aspects. First one is about the end-to-end -end security designs. Within our designs, the sensitive data will be uh, encrypted and decrypted before storing to the databases with uh, uh, external KMS systems such as the Huawei Cloud KMS. And uh, also the, the process to do the, uh, the, the signature process will be uh, located in the TE environment, actually the, the Intel SGS or the Arc TE. And for the next point is that the whole code, the code project is written pure in Rust. We also use the mutual uh, TLS to communicate with the client and the server. Okay, um, I will speed up again. And uh, the second one is about the high throughput. So with our design, the data servers can be uh, simply replicated. And we also use gRPC strings and uh, Due to the reason that the full uh, client and the server is uh, a single task, so it's much better than OBS sign project. You can take a look at these pictures. So no matter uh, configured with the PGP agent, agent and the one compared, uh, and all the OBS sign compared with uh, PGP libraries, we got a much better performance when compared to OBS sign. And the last, uh, the last two is about the RPM. We support the different kind of the binaries, including the RPM ISOs, kernel module files, EFI, and uh, we are also going to support the container images and uh, WSL. Okay, next part. We got a, we have, I have only one minute. And uh, for the Mark Studio, yeah, Mark Studio. Mark Studio is used for our developers because our developers come from, uh, most of the developers come from China, and we have the developers come from the universities or the high schools. So it's a common case that they have some troubles to get the real environment, especially especially for the ARC uh, environment. So uh, to to fix that, we have developed our Box Studio. Box Studio is kind of a native terminal playground in a browser. So for our developers, once he opens the Box Studio, he can use he he can has his own uh, instance uh, of the open URL, and uh, he can directly use the terminal to download the packages, to build the right code, to build the packages as well. And this uh, server is quite simple and fast. Uh, once the uh, administrator, uh, once the developer uh, opens the browser, so it will be uh, 20 minutes to have the have his own version of the open URL. And we also support to customize the different images. And uh, due to the reason that we use the, we both use Docker and the LXD as a backend, so we support a different kind of the uh, courses, including the container the. Uh, application container and the system containers as well as the virtual machines. So, and for, we, I, I got a two more pages. Okay, okay, okay. So the next part is about the UR. UR is short for Open URL User Repositories. Actually, this is based on the copper instance from the Fedora project, but we have upgraded the, this project in several aspects. First, we have upgraded in, in them to make them collaborative 
because all because now all of the complement has been upgraded for the Kubernetes environment. Also, we have write our own version of the uh, task scheduler, which can um, call the API to our CCI clusters and uh, to dynamically uh, create the port for our task. And uh, also, the UI is highly integrated into our package developer process. Okay, that's all. And uh, for the next uh, two parts, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the next one is about uh, the um, uh, Ola Maker. Yes, we, we first uh, try to use the OBS uh, project for the OpenSUSE to build our packages and our images. But uh, currently, we are designing our new version of the uh, package build and distribute systems. And uh, the Ola Maker is in uh, several ways uh, much better than the OBS. The first one is uh, about the dynamic workers, and we support a VM, BMS, and containers. And uh, which will have a uh, deliver much master um, build compared with uh, OBS. And the second one is about the job queue per user with priorities. So it's a common case when you use OBS that uh, you're, if, uh, for individual developers, it will to wait some time to get the task get built. So we have designed a new creep systems that uh, every per user will have its own crease. Uh, we also use the global build catch, which will speed up the whole building process. Uh, as in, in our test, uh, it's, it's about a 30% higher build performance for a single package on average. And the last one is about uh, how to build the images. And uh, I think uh, Fedora and uh, OpenSUSE use their own tools, which is named Kiwi or OS Builder to build the images. So we also have our own version tools that uh, it can be highly custom in the process to, for the image generations, including the, the format, image format, the setup process, and the additional file at the packages. And uh, for the last part, uh, it's uh, about our future plans. So there are top three uh, our uh, task for this year. First uh, thing is about the SSO, because we have so many applications in our communities. So we are trying to associate all the uh, applications with our SSO, the uh, ID platform. And the second one is about the cloud IDEs. We support the, in order to support the development and the test the process with our developer. So we trying to set up the cloud IDE for the communities. And the last one is about the message center because we have different applications, different messages. So we're trying to connect all the messages with the cloud events. And uh, within, within that change, our developers can have the messages comes from the OBS, the Jenkins, and the, the code repositories, and uh, many different applications. So uh, that's all. Oh, sorry. Uh, time for question. Okay, I'm sorry. So you can uh, you can send me an email or just uh, um, outside of this meeting, and if you have any questions. So thank you. That's all.